group with the World Health Organization has now said aspartame, an artificial sweetener that you find in many diet drinks, cereals, and yogurts, may be a possible cause of cancer. It sparked a lot of news stories and questions. So we've called in dietitian Nishta Saxena to break down what this means for us. Good morning. Good morning. I think a lot of people freaked out when they heard this news. Uh, so we're going to break it down. Why and how is the World Health Organization classifying aspartame as a carcinogen? Well, it is a little bit confusing. So there are two different factions within the WHO organization. There's the IRAC, the International Agency for Cancer Research, and then we have the Joint um, Expert Committee on Food Additives. Both of them have reviewed aspartame recently, but this is the first time IRAC, the cancer research faction of the WHO organization, has ever researched aspartame. And the findings have really come up to show that there is insufficient evidence in humans um, and insufficient evidence in animals, but they have classified aspartame in the 2B category of a possible carcinogen. So there's actually three groupings and they've put it sort of in that middle area. Okay, so we know aspartame is used in diet sodas. Uh, you see it in gum yeah. as well. Where else are we finding this? You can actually have it in medications as a binder. It could be in toothpaste. It is generally used as an artificial non-nutritive sweetener. So the whole point of it was for people to be able to have foods have a sweet taste, drinks have a sweet taste, without any cal calories coming on board when they would consume that product. It's actually made of two amino acids, aspartic acid and phenol, uh, phenol acids. So we want to make sure that people understand it isn't something that's commonly in minimally processed food. It really is something you sort of are seeking out when you're looking for something sweet without the calories. So how much do you actually have to consume for this to be considered dangerous? Well, this is interesting because JECA, again, the food additive a part of the WHO, they, they maintained their actual a guideline of 40 milligrams per kilogram body weight. Now, what does that mean for an average person? This is something that's considered an acceptable daily intake, the ADI. And so this could mean an average person drinking nine to 14 uh, pops, diet pops per day, plus adding packets and packets of aspartame to their food, and this would continue for many, many days. So there is very, very few people, almost no one, that are going to meet that ADI daily, and that's really where the risk starts to happen, in their opinion, when you're above that 40 milligrams per kilogram body weight. So do you know, like, why would they even issue an advisory like this if you have to drink that many diet pops or consume that much for there to be even an issue? This feels very much like, I hate to say it, but it kind of feels like fear-mongering. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good point. What this was really done for is a re there's a regular review of scientific literature of compounds and chemicals in the environment that may be leading to ca cancer. You know, one in six people will deal with cancer in their lifetime globally. And so it's sort of like they're just out there mining for any data that may be coming up. And this was a new sort of pile of data that Iraq was interested in looking at. But you make a really good point because in that to be category, there are also things such as cell phone use, aloe vera, and pickled vegetables. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, really, those are things that I think we all know are part of daily life for many different people, and we do really have to take it with a grain of salt how we're interpreting this information in our daily life. Okay, so you've said that aspartame is one of the most studied ingredients in the human food supply. Yeah. Do we know why that is? No, it's a really great question. I actually dug deep to try to find out why it might be, and my best theory is just that if there was this, you know, wonderful chemical that could make everything taste sweet, so you could eat whatever you wanted, um, and then there would be no consequence on our blood sugars or, for instance, body weight or body fat. I think there was a time in the 80s where a lot of researchers and industry probably thought this was the next big thing, and it kind of really possibly tied into the diet industry, which is a $176 billion industry. It may just be because people really thought it would be the next bullet of people being able to eat and drink whatever they want without any consequence, and perhaps that's why the research was poured into that nutrient or anti-nutrient. Bottom line, yes. should we be consuming aspartame? Great question. So it is something that is very easy to avoid. If you choose to not consume anything with aspartame, there's no problem at all with that. I wouldn't think twice about it. If you are a person who's already consuming a lot of products that contain aspartame daily, I would just probably take a look at why you're having so much of it and how much you're actually having. But the bottom line is the dose is the poison, as they say. And so small amounts in a daily person's life, well below the ADI, should not be concerning. Um, because if you're really concerned, you know, there's a few other things that you probably have to take a look at first that are major triggers for cancer in life. Okay, Nisha, thank you so much for coming in this morning. You're welcome.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.